Thank you for appointing uh, uh, one of my constituents, Bill Brock. Oh. Secretary. Please, 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 with reaction. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Thank you. I'm signed up. I'm signed up. so important that this is one of those water's edge things where we ought to be looking like all of us together as Americans and not the other way and with our team over there negotiating now I just think this is so important that they don't have to look across the table and, uh, they're they're cool Yeah, I'm going to take the chair and rest. Uh, 
spread around here. Spread it around. <laughs> okay, you want to rotate on that? <laughs> well, I know I don't have to break it gently about what we're going to talk about. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, but and I know that some of you got some concerns and questions. Do one of two ways. I can hear your questions, or I can start out and make my pitch, and then hear what your points are, and uh, see if I can answer anything about those. Uh, I'm just so very concerned that this is one of those moments in our history where we've got to stand at the water's edge and look like uh, we're not Democrats and Republicans, uh, we're Americans. We've got something that involves our national security. On the MX. First of all, I am convinced that the MX uh, is a legitimate modernization that adds to our national security and could stand on its own as a weapon system that we should be uh, putting in. The Minuteman missiles that we have, they're older than those that are taken care of. If anyone sitting at that desk ever has to give a signal to retaliate and to so he gets have launched theirs, the Minutemen, uh, I think, are really lacking in any capacity with regard to their hard targets in the Soviet Union. So modernization is long overdue. We often thought Barry Goldwater was right years ago, and he said we should have called it the Minuteman 4 as an upgrading of the present weapons and not coined a new name for it. But anyway, it is a modernization. It's hundred other means a thousand warheads. Of course, they've got over 6,000 warheads on similar missiles that they've already gone forward with. They've got two other systems they're developing. We're developing the Midget Man, too, but it's too far down the road to leave this gap in here. We all know we've got a three-legged stool. The submarines, and there we're, we're doing well. The Airborne, and yet even so, the B-1 is just coming online. So it's going to be a time before that's a force to replace our aging B-52s. And I feel very frightened sometimes in the dark when I remember the statement that I heard one officer, a captain of a crew in one of our B-52s talking about the plane that he flew. And he said, I, he said, I understand that if we ever have to be used, uh, nobody's expecting us to get back. And uh, he's probably right. But those two legs still are far ahead of this land leg, and a three-legged stool isn't any good if you haven't got all three legs. So on the weapon side, I believe that it, it can be justified as necessary. Now on the other thing that goes along with it, those fellows over there in Geneva at the tape, I think the timing on this for us to turn this down just simply pulls the, the legs out from under them. For 50 years, 19 times since World War II, prior to this, we have tried to involve the Soviet Union in programs to, to reduce and remove weapons. Even when we were ahead, when we met the monopoly on the bomb, we were willing to talk and say, let's, let's reduce things to get things rid of things like this. And never were they ever really willing. This is the first time I think they have ever publicly announced their desire to not only reduce weapons, but they've even publicly stated they would like to see the elimination of nuclear weapons, as I think we all would. I think the world would be a lot better off if we could put the genie back in the bottle if we didn't have these things anymore. So we're ready to meet them. But I think also they're back at the table after walking away from two negotiations. They're back there because now they have a choice they haven't felt in the last 50 years. We've been so busy unilaterally disarming over the years, and trying for detente and so forth, that they didn't have to do anything. Now, they see us rebuilding in every area from the sea, the air, and now these missiles that they know they sit at the table and their choice is either they legitimately join in reducing the number of weapons or they face us in an arms race. And they know they cannot match us 
either with technology or our industrial power. The only best nice thing they ever really said about us was after World War II when Stalin publicly stated to the world they never could have won without the support and the industrial might of the United States. And so I think they sit there knowing that we have the determination in anything that we do that gives them reason to believe we don't have the determination to stand firm and to stay there. Uh, as I say, I think that just lessens our chances of getting that kind of agreement. But now I know I've gone on long enough. I know that you've got some particular concerns or questions. And fire away. Mr. President, I'm Buddy Romer from Louisiana. Nice to see you again. How you doing? You're looking great. Well, I feel good. Well, good. Come on in. Somebody take the chair over there. And still, still warm. George was sitting in it. And, uh, before him, Gramico, oh, I'm sure beats <laughs> you. He's in the fast lane. Yeah, right. <laughs> they call me the unguided missile, uh, Mr. President. I just want to preface this meeting with this, so I'm glad you invited me over so I can get my directions. <laughs> well, well, I don't think I have to beat around the bush as to what I want to talk about. It happens to be summed up in the initials MX here, and I understand that like a number of others have some reservations or have some questions and things about it. Let me just, if I could, kind of sum up my position. I want to hear from you and what your questions are. The, I am convinced. Wait a minute, my, my ring is down here. Somewhere. There it is. There it is. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, how are you? Good to see you again. Dr. Craig, how are you? Hi, how are you? Mr. Black, Mr. Black, Mr. Black, Mr. Black, Mr. Black, Mr. Black, Mr. I know somebody else who is interested in I appreciate all that you've done and the work that you've given to bring this about. It's a great cause. So I think if we all go over and uh, Dr. Narva. Yes, I'm yes, Dr. Narva. Oh, that's great to see you. I just thought you'd gotten a new military aid.
that works for me. This is Jill Schmidt. Her father runs Singer Corporation. And uh, she just really, she does a terrific job and helped do this. Oh, I thought she had a good job. Did you know that you went to my church when you were talking about Oh, well, yes, that was our church. Yeah, the church. Another member of the Bel Air Reverend Church. Reverend Mama. Yes. This is Jill Smith, our father, and the chairman of the President's Center. She's really good. Uh, works on our labor staff. Good to see you. Hello, President. Hello. Phyllis Shane, President of Campfire. Hello. Thank you for taking the opportunity to see us today. We are here with Campfire celebrating our 75th birthday. And this is. Shelly Coleman. Yeah, I can see in the name. Good. They are hard. Yes, Donna. Hello there. Just fine. Well, pleased to see all of you here. Thank you. And on behalf of the Board of Directors of Campfire, it's my privilege to make you an honorary member of our organization. Well, because of your and Shelly Coleman, our vice president, is going to be dancing with the certificate. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I'm very pleased. Of course, I'm very happy to be helping you celebrate in any way your 75th. Anything that's older than I am, I'm not sure. But uh, also, I know that your theme is friendship, and I know that that's part of the campfire law as a formula for becoming a good friend. And one, of, God, and one of ours is the intergenerational friendship between the uh, child and the grandparent. Give service to Sunai, be trustworthy, be able to help glorify work, and be happy. That's yeah. important. Yes. Well, these are values that made this nation for us great. I am very proud and to now be one of you. <laughs> yes. We, uh, maybe a few of the coming up on the other side. Certainly qualifies at the top of the list. <laughs> well, I'm pleased. 
Well, he, he, did, uh, that. he did very well last night uh, also in the press conference. So. Thank you. A chance to review that. Thank you very much. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. I don't feel badly about even taking your time. Oh, listen, yeah, come in. So take things to do. Take the chair over there. Thank you. Yes, and well, you're, that's pretty close to Dixon. Yes, 